Hey, pilots! Welcome to another exciting episode of War Robots Domination! A series of helpful gameplay tutorials designed to help highlight the tactics and strategies that I use to help tip the scales in my favorite game, War Robots. Each episode will feature a handful of battles along with helpful commentary that will provide insight as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I'm your host, Gotcha Beacons, and I've been playing this awesome game for a few years now and I've learned a few tricks along the way that I'd love to share with y'all. You'll notice that although my hangar is fairly basic and at lower levels, I have been able to climb it up to Expert League, so I believe that you'll find my tactics will help you do more with less, which can be very helpful with today's economy in the game. I should also mention that this is my second account, so don't let my career profile stats fool you. This is actually my baby account, but it sends a great message to pilots who feel they need to chase the current meta in order to be competitive in battle, because you don't. Wise gameplay can usually overcome any fancy gimmick. A death button is a great example. It can still melt just about any build, and its heritage stems all the way back to near the beginning of the game. It's all about knowing when to use it and how to use it. So, without further ado, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episodes while I walk you through my gameplay tactics and share with you my mindset in battle. I hope you find it entertaining, helpful, and fun to watch. I think you will. Be sure to keep a lookout for a hidden treasure. I've placed a link in one of the battles of this episode that will give you access to one of my exclusive winning formula videos. These private reserve videos were specially designed for squad battles and work amazingly well for domination and beacon rush and provide specific formation strategies for certain maps that will practically guarantee a victory to the team that deploys these tactics correctly. So. Keep a lookout for him, guys. Happy hunting. I'm going to call this battle Speed Hack. And I'll explain why as we go along here, guys. Enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song, Woodish. All right, so we're in Shenzhen. So in Shenzhen, I use what I call a closed map deck. And I, I speak about these a lot. There's closed map and open maps. Uh, uh, a closed map is a, a map like Shenzhen, Moon, Rome, Power Plant. Um, are all kind of closed maps. They're maps that have lots of structures like this. They don't have lots of line of sight. Um, and so they don't really good, they're not really good for range bots. Um, you could argue that someone could park and, and have used, you know, cover the, the center beacon with a range bot. But you know what, if all you can cover is one uh, beacon or maybe two, then it's not enough. And there is one or two perches where you can do three, but I found that, you know, on this map especially, um, there's another reason I want to use a closed map deck. A closed map deck is where all your bots are faster, they're more nimble, uh, they're more inside knife fighter type things, um, and, uh, you know, it, it helps to uh, have a better advantage for speeding around and getting these beacons. So. That's another part of the game, and it's obviously, for me, the primary part of the game is, is getting beacons and, and, and capping them and, and maintaining them. And on, on a closed map like this, one of the other things that happens with all these different routes between beacons, um, there isn't like one main center beacon that's the point of contention. Like you can see on Yamato, how center is like the, the most important beacon, everyone's fighting for it, uh, carriers like that too. Well, on these closed map decks, uh, with all these routes that kind of connect all the different ways of getting from beacon to beacon, the beacon flow really does flow back and forth. So, um, the, the advantage of having a closed map deck is these are all speedy bots. Um, and you need speedy bots to rush around like I've been doing and basically making sure that they stay blue because they're going to get capped and liberated back by the reds a lot. So, as long as you're always staying on top and ahead of the beacon count, you're gonna have a you know a win at the end, and they can go right down to the wire. But see, like this center one just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. So I've been taking advantage of my speedy little bots. You know, obviously this is Diablo. He's got a great advantage for when it comes to capping beacons. But I was using uh, you know whiz bang my flash. I was using or my my, my uh, little um, blitz. I was using um, uh, but or. Er, Frick at the beginning to cap the other beacon there, um, and obviously the Reds are staying on top of it, but with the little Diablo here and his stealth ability, he can pretty much run around into almost enemy territory, and yeah, he's going to get tagged a little bit, but not enough, and I can just keep going back and uh, re-liberating the ones that got turned back. You know, you're going to have Reds that do a great job too um, of moving around, so 
I'm using the speed hack. So make sure that when you're going into a map like this, if you can have two decks, guys, try to do that. I know your first 5,000 should be for your fifth slot, but your, but your next 7,500 really should be for a second deck. And try to get two decks, an open map deck and a closed map deck. And this closed map deck really should have mostly faster knife fighter type builds. One that can, ones that can speed around like I've been doing with Little Diablo. Not a lot of damage, but man, it sure did help us stay on top of the beacons and have a nice green banner at the end, guys. And you know I'm all about the beacons. My name has got your beacons. But if you're going to be like that, you need to be able to have a hanger, you know, that 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 complements that. So um, get a lot of faster bots. They really do help. Um, I didn't have a lot of DPS, not a lot of high damage, but I certainly kept a lot of beacons and it kept, helped Kevin bring home the uh, nice green banner. Great pilots on both sides. And if you see your name, thanks for the game. Peace out. I'm going to call this battle Grand Finale. And you're going to want to stick around to the end, guys. Enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song. November has got a great sound to it. All right, so this is uh, Power Plant. And I put the closed map deck on here. A lot of faster, nimble, knife fighter type builds. I mentioned this earlier. Yeah, this is the kind of map you want to put these on so you can run around, uh, get through structures, go fast, uh, get in, do some uh, knife fighting, closed range fighting, and uh, get out. You know, um, this is Frick. He's my my death button raven and remember i still have level six bots level nine weapons i'm in against uh, masters and champions uh, some and some experts as well but as a result i'm gonna get burned out kind of quickly if i get a little too reckless this is Whizbang. he's my halo blitz he's a little assassin another one now i don't know what's going on over there but my whole game and domination is keeping them blue i'm calling this game grand finale now on Beacon Rush, there is one pace, and I've said this before many times, fast forward, always going fast, always going forward. On Domination, it is not that way. On Domination, it is about finding a rhythm and a balance and a pace to the battle. Now, some battles allow you to go in and win early, but some do not. And so when I did, went on, one of the things that I always am trying to do is be mindful of what's going on on the battlefield and what's going on around me, who is in with me, what are they doing, what are their actions, what are they strong at and all. And I've noticed that um, although um, I'm, you know, I'm running around capping some beacons, they're, they're, the reds are too. So when you have a good beacon capping team against you, it's important that you don't try to do it all in one shot because they're gonna, they're, I mean, don't get too crazy. Try to pace yourself out. Try to make sure that you're kind of balancing your efforts. Your team is not gonna be aggressive on beacons. They're gonna be semi-aggressive and you gotta make sure that you're leaving yourself enough damage uh, or energy it, that you don't mech out early, that you don't get too aggressive, that you pace it but you re you, you're, you're ready for a long haul. This is one of those epic battles where it kind of goes back and forth. We cap some, they cap some. We cap some, they cap some. And we're right now we're down three to two. And now I'm trying to get back in here. I didn't empty my guns. I thought I did and I didn't. And I didn't recharge him very well for Buzzkill here. This is Buzzkill. He's my Spark Scorch Mentor. He buzzes and he kills you. And one's one of everyone's favorite. Um, he's very, very durable, but you gotta at least go in with a full set of weapons. Oh my gosh, sorry Buzzkill. You probably would have had to haul your life left I had to pull that stunt. Oh well, um, now I'm gonna go after this guy. I'm not gonna weather that one, but we're at a four capper now. But I bet they're gonna come back as they are right now because the red team is all about it. Now, I saw some funny builds. You know, I saw a, uh, a, car a, 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 a Trident Cardinge running around on our team. Obviously, I saw Zenit on their team. That was a Zenit, um, a Zenit Falcon. <laughs> So there's a lot of interesting builds running around the battlefield, and I see that. But I also see, again, that um, they are definitely always pushing back on beacons. Every time we push, they push back. And um, Power Plant is one of those maps where you can really move around um, a lot and maneuver around buildings, and it, the flow of beacons will go back and forth. So it's important that you pace yourself, as I've mentioned. Um, these are all of my knife fighter type builds that I'm going around, and I'm always after a beacon, the least contested beacon but I always make sure that I have always um, you know something ready to drop in for the grand finale and the grand finale usually happens in a battle on a battle like this like maybe right about now where um, everyone's starting to thin down a little bit and it's time for you to make one big push I took two out with the flash he's my uh, halo uh, he's my gust uh, marquee pursuer and now I'm going into buzzkill 
Uh, not Buzzkill, excuse me. This is Diablo. Diablo's my little Loki. He's great for grand finales. He's a good finisher on a on a, on a map where you need beacons. But what uh, doesn't work well is if you yeah, pull him out too early. If I pull him out too early um, on a map like this, uh, especially against a team with, that is very, very good on beacons, it won't work well because eventually um, Diablo does burn out. He does get killed. And then when he's down and he's gone, he doesn't have that power. So the important thing about the Loki, the important thing about Diablo is timing it, pacing it. Don't pull him out too early. Make sure you're pulling him out when the combat is heated and you can go around and make this happen. If I pulled him out earlier, he would have been dead by now and he wouldn't have been able to pull that nice uh, grand finale at the end there. So, um, you know, it's important that you pace yourself in battle. Be mindful of your team and what the other team is doing and how they're at uh, attacking the beacons and don't try to rush too far close into it or too fast into it if you don't think it's going to work out. So be uh, be ready for that and have the um, the uh, arsenal in your hangar uh, that can take care of it and make sure you hold it to the right spot there and have those nice grand finales. And if you see your name, thanks for the game. Peace out. Having a goalless battle? Power Rush! Woohoo! Stick around! Enjoy my friends in the background as they play their awesome instrumental mortality! Alright guys, this is this episode's Speak and Rush Battle! It never changes! Fast forward! Any map, it don't matter! It always works the same! That guy has that one, so I'm going for the next neutral beacon! That's this one here, that's the next one closest to their home spawn area! This is how you do it guys, you rush in! You rush in with all forces! I went in, I... It doesn't matter. Certain death, it doesn't matter. Look, my guys are right behind me. We got that one. Now I'm going to rush on in, and I'm going to get my toes inside that, because there's going to be some, obviously there's going to be some resistance from the Reds. They got a Fenrir in there. It don't matter. We're going to get my toes on the line. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice the body. It don't matter. You go full forward, full speed ahead. You do a power rush on Beacon Rush. Look at that. Five beacons, guys. This is all it takes on Beacon Rush. Now, obviously, if you're way outmatched, it doesn't matter for that either. But if you've got a balanced team, their team against yours, and it's a fairly equal battle, it don't matter what they bring. If you rush on in like this, you are absolutely tying a noose around their neck. You're getting a containment zone. They can't get out of their area. You have developed, you have created a spawn raid right away. Watch this, guys. I'm dying here. Oh, I'm done, not done. Where are we? We are all at their spawn area because when you die, you you respawn right back in up against them. And that's what you do. You keep pushing back again. I'm going to go run right in their spawn area. It don't matter. You know why? The game is over. Guys, you got to put a power rush on Beacon Rush. It doesn't matter the map. It doesn't matter who you're up against. If you rush forward so fast and so powerful, you absolutely suffocate them before they even know what happened. You don't open up with a range bot. You don't open up with a slow bot. You open up with the fastest things you have and load your hanger up with them. For Beacon Rush, that's the way to do it. If you see your name, thanks for the game. Peace out. Well, friends, that just about wraps it up for another episode. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and were able to take something you learned and use it in battle. I add content to my YouTube channel almost daily, so please stop by when you're able and check out the fresh new material. Or just click on an old episode and maybe catch another tip that'll help you up your game. If you like what you see, please tap on the red subscription button and then tap the bell to be notified when new episodes are released. It would also be helpful if you could make a comment about the video. Whether it's an example of how the episode helped you, or maybe additional advice to help elaborate on the tactics I shared, or even constructive comments that'll help clarify something I might have missed. It's all good and greatly appreciated. Finally, this game is full of challenges and can create frustration for some who are simply trying to have fun with this awesome game. My goal is to provide you all with helpful information and help reduce the frustration and increase the fun. So, if you feel these videos are helping you, please share them with a friend, someone who you think might benefit from them. Well, that's about it for today, guys. As always, keep them blue out there and I hope to see you on the battlefield. Make sure you're having fun, though, because if you're not, you're doing it wrong. I love you all for your support. Play well. Peace out.